good look at the tail of the tape. I wonder, what's these stats between these two guys? 100% win rate versus Linguagua. Okay. Well, um, that is a little rigged because there was only one match between them in uh, the March qualifier, I believe, at WGL Pro. That was a 2-0, 4 Linguagua not really there yet, but yes, yeah, just one match that doesn't say too much. All right. So, this is going to be a chance for... Can we still call him the young gun? I believe we can. We've had him around the scene for a while now. But um, after this one outstanding performance in the WGL qualifier where he astounded the world, it's gotten a little more quiet around him again. Uh, one to zero. What can we say about him? Well, he is the most successful competitive under player in, well, years and years, perhaps. It's getting close to being able to say undead history, Warcraft history. Because he just won the Yule Cup not too recently, but at WGL, at the offline uh, tournaments, which is, you know, the biggest indicator, which is the crown jewel in Warcraft competition, it hasn't been the greatest for 1-0 to zero either yet, lately. That's true. Uh, we don't know how serious he takes things, that's always the question with him, but this tournament is for $44,500, and with that, he really, really should take this seriously, and I think we will see the best 1-0 to zero possible. On the other side, yeah, you're right, um, there is a little bit of a decline for Lin Guagua. I think people don't underestimate him anymore. This is the biggest tournament that he has ever played. I'm really, really happy that him and Huck were invited by the Chinese organizers to just um, reward their recent performance because they were just outstanding in especially the WGL qualifiers. And we have a little bit of a surprise as this is Echo Isles, usually Blade Master territory, but guess what? Lin Guagua opting for a Farsi. Yeah, and I think 1-0 was not ready for this. Didn't have uh, the Narrow Tower in place. Normally, you are supposed to expect a Blade Master here, but yeah, Farseer now coming into the main, and that's definitely gonna be a Ziggurat cancelled. However, Farseer only level 1, doesn't have the Chain Lightning yet, so finding Acolyte kills, which is the most expensive thing or the most costly thing you can do to the undead, is gonna be hard to pull off. In fact, the Grunt is diving deep into the main, and I don't see that one escaping, so that's gonna be a costly loss now for the Orc side, and there's easily enough coil to save the Acolyte. Looked okay with the first Ziggurat cancel, but at the end of the day, this opening not going in the way of the Orc. I agree. I mean, he is stuck on one Fiend, 1-0 one is for a long time, but he actually built a backup Acolyte. Maybe he did expect this in the end or is going for an expansion later but he has that ready so even an acolyte loss wouldn't have been too big so i don't really understand why he's diving so deep into the base with that grunt uh, first little mistake for linguago but maybe it's the nerves this tier two tech is about to be finished here um a little slower for one to zero but not that much but yeah he can't go for a lich i mean this ziggurat oh will it line up I think it does. He may have to wait a little bit, but not by too much. Yeah, it was the Ted Fiend build order, so he had the sc Acolyte Scout uh, from the beginning still. But the Farseer moving across so early, like, if you have Grunts, you can creep up a little bit, and level 2 Farseer is a lot better than level 1, especially for diving the base. If he was solo Farseer, I would understand his level 1 harass, but yeah, this all seems not to be clicking too well just yet. For Linguagua, but in the middle now he's getting the level 2 with the Ogre Magi here, which is very unusual to see with the Farseer and the Grunt behind the marketplace. It's also another risk he's taking, right? If an Undead shows up here to creep Jack, this looks pretty painful. Looks like the second Grunt lost, but 1 to 0. He's on his side of the map in the bottom side in the bottom left, creeping up the natural, getting the ring now along with the circlet, and the DK already very close to level 3. That's true. I mean, we've seen more and more undeads going for the marketplace earlier on with that DK skeleton creep. Uh, not 1 to 0 here, though. He's focusing on his own progress, close to level 3, as you said. And he, there is an acolyte hidden in the woods, the left hand side of the map. And he's moving over now. So this <clears throat> looks like an early tier 2 expansion. We've been seeing more and more undead expansions lately. Uh... In the most recent patches, it's become more and more part of the meta. But against Orc, it's still very unusual. Against Night Elf, we see it a lot nowadays. Even late game counter expo against Human is quite a popular play. But against Orc, uh, maybe it's just for scouting? I'm not quite sure. We have the Slaughterhouse coming up, the Lich is out. 
What do we see from Linguagua? It's a TC second and only a bestiary. Double only bestiary. a single one. So Double bestiary. Oh, I didn't see the second one. Oh, yeah, you're it's right. It's Mass right. Raiders, so Lin Guagua once again going off meta. This is like his thing to do. Not going the standard route, not going for the tier 3 late game army, but this looks like clear base lame, I think. Uh, should be Shockwave with that as well. So Chain Lightning against Acolytes, Shockwaves and Raiders against uh, buildings. But first, he has to defend home. It's in a town portal, only a staff, and he defends with this Farseer alone here. Can he save that Burrow? Mass repair, but the Lich is there as well. Not even sure if the Frost Armor is that necessary with Nova. This would be a guaranteed kill on the Burrow. Chain Lightning rattling through, needs a coil, less damage from the DK, but the Burrow falls in the end. Finally, the TC arrives, finally he has a Stomp. But not on the DK, the coil in the end a little too late, so the Fiend goes down. And he almost has that Lich surrounded with the end snare. This could be a chance for him, one coil is ready, it's on cooldown now. Does he have enough damage to knock down the second hero? Coil should be ready again, doesn't even need it. One to zero, fighting out and killing a Grunt in the retreat either. Yeah, this was supposed to be just a distraction attack, really, for the expansion. But he's trading favorably, killing a Grunt and a Boro in exchange for that Fiend. But now the speed slow is coming in and the ensnares must be ready. One onto the Fiend, that should be an easy ensnare and kill. Another one onto the statue and now it's starting to become expensive here for 1 to 0. Last coil being used, no more healing after this. Usually might signal the retreat for the undead with the TP. But 1 to 0 is still hanging in there. Uh, refusing to back away from this fight and he's got a lot of skeletons still but he's losing the last stat he's losing another fiend dropping down to only a single fiend this is becoming what very expensive now for one to zero oh he needs to kill this statue he put a lot of work and units into this raider is chasing oh. for another end snare maybe farseer was blocked he needs that end snare gets it so this statue falls on the left hand side more and more peons are falling lich rises up to level two the fiend is also still alive, but that's the only one. Oh, so important for one to zero that another statue is coming in here. So close for another coil, and with that, he can stay longer in this fight for one more coil, I believe. There's one more chain lightning or new wolves. The TC finally rises up to level two, gets the DK in his surround, but I guess there's no damage to kill him. So this should be a TP for one to zero soon. This fight is lasting for, I don't know, two minutes now already. And in the end, I think uh, Linguagua has the like slightly better army, but one two zero. Oh expect my God! He actually gets out. Are you serious? But Raiders coming with the ensnare. Okay, finally. Yeah, but on the back of this fight, one two zero established the expansion. Yes. Two acolytes already in. Ziggurat is finished too, and yeah, with that big advantage now, it should be one two zero's game. Linguagua has to base lame now. And I'm surprised that this went so well for 1 to 0. Didn't have to TP out for the longest time. He went for the push initially with three fiends and a single statue, I think. Lost the first fiend quickly, but still was able to fight on against the wolves and everything else without even destroyers. This weird tier 2 expansion, which is at least to me very unusual. Normally undeads will try to rush tier 3 as they are the big power spike pretty much with any strategy starts hitting. With destroyers, with third hero, with the orb, the undead becomes so much more powerful but one to zero we've been seeing this quite a bit from him lately not seemingly not valuing the tier three so highly anymore exactly. the first donation of the day thank you very much hoffy 309 10 euros good morning yes man welcome to the back to warcraft morning show dk has no tp anymore it's going to be surrounded immediately there's also a stun to diminish the damage from that lich he's trying to fight out once again and it works one to zero calculating this abs this risk absolutely perfectly but for the lich as well still lack of damage for the orc he gets good uh, situations here with hero surrounds but then he can't seal the deal he can't finish the job he can't get the heroes uh, six feet under and he's losing so many raiders and units in the process all the time. And in the meantime, the TC gets around it. If he had a stomp here, this might be a little scary for 1 to 0, but there is no stomp. The DK dropping low at the same time, though. Heal potion on him will have to be used in a second. One more kill for the level 4. That will have to be the death pack. Then, coil, level up, level 4, death pack, Aww. eats the fiend. With that, he survives. Still almost in the surround. But gets out of there. One fiend only left, but plenty of skeletons once again, just as it was earlier. The mass skeleton saving one to zero's fight. Surround, countered by a staff. Outstanding plays by both these guys. But the pressure is on Linguagua. He's fighting against an expansion. He needs to finish this game. He needs to win it sooner rather than later. 
There was a little bit of a wolf harass. He killed one acolyte and maybe one statue. Ah, not really. This shop will not come up. The Farseer can't heal. He has no selves anymore on him, at least. The TC has to do the healing. Trying to go for the surround and the DK again, maybe? Not really. Man, these wolves are alive for such a long time. It's very unusual to not see them dispelled at all. And here another ensnare on a fiend. Stomp coming in as well. One more coil will be there, and a second coil to follow soon after. Level three on the lich. I wonder if he might even go frost armor because he has barely any mana to use the novas. But that would be kind of weird. It is nova two, and the next surround there on a raider. These players just keep on trading like crazy. But that is something that one to zero will be fond of, as he has that expansion still, obviously. Another Fiend falls, another Raider falls, 1-0 at 43 supply, and Linguaga is dropping deep to 33, losing the Grunt will bring him down to 30 only. He's gonna get that Fiend alright, but he's fighting against the Blight now, as well as statues, even in Necropolis, we have a Narrow Tower here as well, he needs to get the zero kill. He finds the Lich with the Ensnare in the surround, he needs to be able to kill him off as well. But what about the t Farseer? TP on him, yeah, Invul used first, but now the TC in trouble. The TC. Focus is coming on him, TP. Saves both heroes with that, but again, the damage is simply not enough. He needs an add-on for the deeps, but not like this, man. Not like this. And 1-0 to zero again, holding this expansion, winning that fight, trading favorably. Level 4.5 on the DK, level 3.3 .3 on that Lich, getting the consumables. Now it even has the money for the boots and the Lich. Oh, beautiful. Is so good. <laughs> level 3 and 2 only for Linguagua. So on each hero, he's like one level behind. Nice yeah, looking pretty desperate right now for Linguagua. The invul is gone. The TC might be in a bit of trouble. And just with the two fiends and the statues here, 1 to 0 is moving in very confidently. I imagine now he's on his way to tier 3. Yeah, in fact, is almost done already. Two Necropolis. This one in the main base, one at the expansion. Towers there as well. Linguagua is looking for, I don't know, some kind of base attack, but with one grunt, one raider. Yes, he has the wolves as well, but this is all looking like this game has slipped away. Mr. David L. Ross, thank you for the 100 bits. And yeah, maybe the last stand for the new Chinese orc. Getting one acolyte, okay. Getting the shop, maybe, okay. But there's a backup shop in the main. Nice by 120, by the way, to build the Necropolis to save the Lumber. He is quite short on Lumber, has uh, mismanaged the resources a little bit. I mean, he will go into Orb and more items, so this will balance out in a bit. He doesn't even really care about this attack. He's creeping the right-hand side. The Mercenary Cap, aggressive TP now, and he can be so confident with this level 3 Lich and level 4 DK. Yeah, absolutely. And with the TP back, uh, now he's going to be able to get the orb as well, get a new teleport. One zero is pretty rich here at 1,000 gold. Obviously, with the expansion, has that big economy economy advantage. Linguagua, he would love to be tier three. If you're tier three right now, maybe you can go for a tiny great hall. Maybe that's going to work out, but that is no option for him. He's tier two only, and tier three is way too late at this point in the game. Another ring of protection? No, okay. Had those earlier. Level four on the Lich already. Plus four intelligence, baby. Oh yes. I heard it's and one of the best ring. level fours uh, <laughs> in the world with a lot of, uh, like what was it again, Remo? It's something is special about Lich level four. It makes, me, it makes you so smart, dude. It makes you so smart giving you plus four Lich intelligence. Unbelievable. And by the way, also now Dark Ritual for more mana on the Lich, who already has a mana pool of 510. All right, here we go again, Linguagua. Is he actually committing to this? He does have a TP, I believe, with the Undead Force swooping in. He's not gonna have a chance to really take this fight. TP out, trying to save all of his raiders, but one will be lost, and the second one is lucky to get away. This was a distraction attack for the expansion in the south, but it's an orc expansion. It takes forever. I'm not sure if this will come through. Also, it's actually a nice angle to attack from the south, isn't it? Like, it blocks the entire orc army away yeah. through that little choke. I'm not a fan of this position. Close I think you just five. put it there in hopes that a skeleton scout, you know, won't see it there. Uh, the yeah, yeah. Are under attack. The, 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 the DK, by the way, a lot of the rings 
plus seven armor. And yeah, there was a corpse, he has to cancel this immediately, but this is 1-2-0 far away from his main. Yes, he does have a TP, uh, trying to defend this with the Lich alone. Linguagua, trying to kill the Black Citadel, will this work? Real TP coming in after, oh, he went to the other Necropolis, so he didn't realize that it was, you know, no TP onto the Black Citadel. That was a cool little play towards the end. And that's the 1-0 for one 0 with this unusual, very unusual tier two expansion. <laughs> What's to be expected? Um, the one to zero is dominating here. He's now three and zero oh against Linguagua, but fighting with the low level FSTC and only raiders. These were pretty cool fights by Linguagua. I mean, not too successful, but cool little moves here and there. Um, so he shows his skills for sure and uh, shows that he deserves to be in this tournament so far. Are you in the game? No. Okay, something was blinking for me, uh, I thought. Uh, yeah, Nettie's kind of likes uh, to yeah, blink. Yeah, highlighting, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, also when you start a game, it's like flashing like crazy. Huh. One, two, zero. I don't, I wonder, like, oftentimes it feels like he's trying stuff out in official matches. like. Official matches are his practice games. You know what I mean? Pretty much, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, mean, ladder is just uh, fun times. Yeah, ladder, he drops the items on the ground, doesn't pick them up, so it becomes a, a tougher fight for him. That's actually what he said in one of the interviews. Like Goku uh, training with uh, the weights on his wrists. Um, but it did look like 1 to 0 was the superior player around, yes, all around. Absolutely. I think the key mo move there was the Fiend push into the main, destroying the Burrow, and there's not many undeads who can hold off against the <laughs> level 2 wolves with only, with only two Fiends for such a long time. Uh, I, from personal experience, I was thinking like, dude, you gotta TP. You gotta TP out of this, you gotta lose everything. But it's 1-2-0, no. man. He trades, and he trades favorably, and in the meantime, there's an expansion in the back. Um, his execution in army control is still second to none most of yeah. the time. He's just a different beast. I liked uh, some moves of Linguagua, though. He was ensnaring some things and then sent the ghouls in to finish the job so the raider can stay in the fight and stuff. Um, there is definitely potential for Linguagua, but I mean, it's, there's no shame in losing 2 1 2 0. Even if it's only one map, uh, Linguagua, maybe he has a special strategy on his map pick now. Um, like, his strategies are so unique that, like, to an extent that he played TC Headhunters in Orc Mirror, which I think in the history of Warcraft has never happened before. So you would uh, suggest to him to play something out of the box now to go for yes. some cheese? Absolutely. You can't go head-to-head -head with 1-2-0 in micro battles. That's, that's impossible. Um, we're going on to Concealed Hills next. And there that is, is a pretty good Farseer map. For cheese and a Farseer map indeed. It was here at WGL, right? 1 to 0 versus Focus? Where yes, Focus had this it. outstanding game where we saw uh, the Ogre Lord abused for the first time with the Windriders. Um, Focus might be on a bit of a higher level. By the way, we're going to see Focus later as well. I'm really looking forward to that match. Um, he's <sighs> I'm been so sad that I can't. Cast that match. Nah, 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 nah. You gotta go to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got until 10.15 or something. You got a long day at work? No, just four hours. Oh, okay, at least. Yeah, today is like do your shit day where a lot of things that uh, I postponed for a long time have to be done. So I'm not looking forward to the afternoon. By the way, uh, just a little side note for you viewers out there. Uh, last couple of times I streamed, uh, there was a bug in my OBS. I couldn't uh, record the Discord, so I didn't have Neo's cam. Now I do have Neo's cam, but I forgot to mention this to Neo. So uh, last minute he was like, ah, oh, the cam doesn't work, right? And I was like, no, no, it does work. And he says, oh, okay, cool. And then I saw him turning on his cam and like scrambling to clean up his room. <laughs> and he was hustling <laughs> from one side to the next. And well, it, was, it was still dark. <laughs> well, I didn't do my bed. And uh, usually, like, right behind me, there's my laundry. And the people really don't have to see my underwear. So <laughs> I was just uh, putting that into a different corner because I think you can't uh, use my green screen yet. We will be working on this. Well, uh, do you have uh, 
Do you have underwear with penguins on them, Neon? I had, but... You lost them. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I ripped them apart like Hulk Hogan rips his shirt, you know? Yeah. And Sometimes like... when, I, when I get too excited, I do these things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boxers have a very low life expectancy sometimes. I don't know what that is yeah. all about. So anyways, game number two, though. Okay, it's not yeah, starting we... yet. Uh, gives yeah, us a we... ch chance to mention what other games we have coming later. Linguagua versus Lucifer coming after this <laughs> at uh, 10 a.m., by the way. At, in this tournament, they are sticking strictly to the schedule, by the way. So uh, we can reliably say it's going to be 10 a.m. exactly. And then we're going to have a bit of a break later on um, where we're going to go offline again before we're back at 2 p.m. with Lucifer versus Focus, which could possibly be the best game of today. Um, yeah. Where we're going to be missing Neo very much, but still going to be able to enjoy this tournament. Indeed. And uh, the game is about to start, but we did an announcement yesterday that should get you all pretty excited because this weekend is going to be so awesome. We will not be streaming from Hamburg or Mainz, but we will be streaming from Krefeld. And if you're not too familiar with the esports scene and not too familiar with German geographics, then what do you think, why the fuck would you go to Krefeld? And what is Krefeld anyway? Well, it's the home of Take TV. Take TV um is a renowned tournament organizer for starcraft they do the home story cups there also for hearthstone and now in collaboration with todd we do have our very own warcraft 3 home story cup you can attend uh there in krefeld they have a bar where you can watch the games we will be there providing the b stream for that tournament and from the quarterfinal on join the main stage as well and our w league cast that will start on saturday and sunday at 8 a.m. will be produced from a studio of Take TV in Krefeld. So this is going to be awesome. This weekend, man, I'm looking so much forward to this. I, I Be Friday already. I know. I know how you how long you've been talking about uh, a home story cup for Warcraft, basically. And this is as close as it ever was. We have some of the best players from Europe making it to Krefeld to the legendary home story cup environment of Take TV. And yeah, I'm going to be there as well, of course. And I'm so looking forward to it, man. It's going to be an exhausting as hell weekend for us. <laughs> ah, come on. It's just 18 hours of casting. <laughs> it's not that much. It's probably actually going to be more than 12 hours, dude. Oh, Jesus Christ. But it's all going to be worth it. Yeah. And I can't wait for the party on Sunday. Oh, yeah. So, game starts. On Concealed Hills, we have 1-2-0 in the lead with a 1-0. He is at the bottom left of things in the red. His opponent, Lin Guagua, the underdog. Will he be able to claim a map here? That would already be a surprise, but we've seen surprises yesterday already with Soin taking a map off of Infi and Lin. He is eliminated whatsoever, but... Uh, yeah, the underdogs are not chanceless anymore. I think that's what we can take away from yesterday. Yeah. That's true, but also um, I think there is still value in putting stock in the favorites if they are in shape. I feel like that's something I'm talking about a lot recently, like what shape are the players in. We talked about it a lot yesterday for Lin, where the overall judgment has to be, yeah, he was looking pretty good, but he wasn't looking his best. 1-2-0 <clears throat> is, of course, also the big favorite here. He's looking good. Is he looking his best? I don't know. Um... He's certainly looking strong, though. What I'm most surprised about 1-0 recently is how much he's willing to experiment. Not just every now and then, yeah. but it seems like all the time, everywhere. We've seen a lot of different first heroes from him, even, like Lich first. And what else did he play? You pointed it out yesterday. I forgot already. Yeah, in uh, when he played against Night Elf uh, in that one tournament, he played Dreadlord first, Lich first, DK first. And when he played against Chimiko, he played Fire Lord first. Ah, yeah, Fire Lord it was, exactly. So this time he's sticking to the normal plan with a Tetch Fiend build with a DK first. No big surprise, but Lin Guagua once again going off meta. He played a Farseer when the Blade Master is standard, and now on Concealed Hills, where the Farseer is standard, he's going Blade and starting off nicely with a close attack. Yeah, I was really expecting Farseer, perhaps Shadowhunter for the Ogre Lord abuse. That looks really strong at the moment. And look at this Ogre Lord at, at 4.20 right now. 
this is on the new patch. Sometimes the aggro is just weird. Did you see that? It followed yeah, the yeah, low HP skeleton all the way out there. I wonder what triggers this. Anyways, <laughs> Gloves of Haste to begin with, 4120, tacking on one ziggurat without a narrow. Could be considered slightly, slightly greedy, but normally we don't have early aggression anyways happening. Late Master with a circlet as well, going to the Spider Crab. Hoping for the Tome of Experience. Tech should be a little bit faster for the Orc. It is, by around 10 seconds or so, not too much. Tome of Intelligence, not the greatest for him, but level 2 regardless. 1 to 0, level 2 as well. So, Unholy Aura unlocked with the Spider Socks and Gloves of Haze, also not the best for the DK, but attack speed for Lich is always good. The first Fiend is coming, this time no early aggression for Linguagua, rather focusing on the Blade Master's progress. Um, the skeleton saw the movement of Linguagua already, so his position is revealed for now. 1 to 0 knows, he's safe to creep this. Can Linguagua go for another skeleton? Ah, nice, 1 to 0 again with the skeleton, seeing the movement. This is what makes him so good. Yeah, before he even his rise to absolute world class, I think this is the first thing that stuck out to us, how impeccable his skeleton's micro always yeah. was, and still always is. As this early game okay, is pretty four, tame bro. so far. Hold up. What? Three units around on the Overlord? Can he lure him into oh. the tavern? Yeah. Oh, oh that was wow. close. He almost slipped out. That's really cool. That is pretty crazy indeed. It will take some time. For once, 1 to 0 is not scouting. The skeleton is going to the laboratory to figure things out. Oh no, the high priest is coming in for inner fire and heal. This oh, is not good. the skeleton. The skeleton sees it. But I think oh, 1 no. to 0 is too far away. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. This is taking a long time though. Hopefully, this is a good item. Uh, it's, uh. A, it's a decent item. But. As far as experience gain goes, this wasn't the most effective way of going about it. Nope, he's a little behind the DK now. But he takes away the biggest item of the map uh, from the undead. I mean, it's usually the orc who gets it anyway, so 1-2-0 shouldn't calculate this item in. Um, yeah, but yeah, he claims that and the biggest experience on the map as well. So maybe not the worst move. And yeah, it is an outside-the-box thing. Once again, and I think you need those moves against 1-2-0. Yeah. Well, that's a cool little play. If that is, I don't know, Claws plus 12 early on, that's really good. If that is any kind of aura, really, is really good. Yeah. Um, but not that lucky. At least it wasn't the crystal ball, I guess. <laughs> Tier 3 this time by Linguagua. Maybe he noticed that, okay, uh, the damage was just not enough on Echo. I need something more. A player's forces are under attack. Yeah, it's looking pretty standard here. Uh, we saw the one cool little creeper out there by Guagua, but other than that, tier 3 standard with... Oh, okay, I wonder what they're talking about. Is that the ping? I don't oh, no. know. Usually they pause then. The is standing in the main. Seems yeah, like he forgot to change. include him into the group. There we go. Lich now going out. The Shadowhunter already out on the map. Creeping up a bit solo here. Ring plus three <clears throat> for the TC later on, which it most certainly should be. Uh, Remo, did you update the score, by the way? Oh, I'm afraid I forgot. <laughs> All right, we can do it now. So I'm taking some pretty small camps here, though. Uh, the remainder of the natural of the opponents, and now the kobolds. You want to hit him, have him hit level 3 as quickly as possible. That is desperately required in the late game. Blade Master, with his own level 3, is stalking the undead right now. Trying to slow down 1 to 0 as much as possible. Lich himself having a tough time leveling. The DK though is looking rather good. Tier 3 is actually a little faster for the undead. 1 to 0 once again, going for a fairly greedy tech. Was 2 fiends or 3 fiends? I'm not quite sure. Without Slaughterhouse, Slaughterhouse came later then. But of course, we'll still be coming in for those statues. And well, this is kind of a much more normal game what we're used to seeing nowadays in the meta. It's creeping, creeping, creeping until tier 3, and then everything starts unfolding. Early web for 1-2-0. It's been done, and now he's going for the Red Drake, but the Blade Master is around the corner. 
no reveal here. Can the Blade Master get it? Can he get the second red spot item? That would be gigantic for Lingwagua. And he gets it! Sobi Mask! That's a nice one. Continuing his damage on that DK. Yeah, no dust of appearance here. That was a little sloppy, I guess. Um, but well, he got the last hit with the coil. However, yeah, as you said, Sobi Mask. That's a very nice one for the Shadow Hunter, most likely later on. Third hero, Dreadlord coming in. Ooh. TC and, on the other side. And with that, most likely that destroyer timing, which we've been seeing quite a lot as well. Blade Master sees the last hit there of the Mud Golem. Every little thing counts. The Lich is still only level one. This is starting to become a problem. He will most likely have this. Okay, there's dust now. One to zero learning from his mistakes. Otherwise, this Rock Golem could have been stolen as well, but he gets the High Priest. Delaying the progress of 1 to 0 even further. There's no Nova in this army. And I think the Orc army, he will be level 3 now on the Shadow Hunter. Uh, there's going to be a lot of mana with the Sobi Mask and the Talisman. Or the Medallion. Sorry. Oh my god, he got that as well. The Blade what? Master got the last hit and the item. What? How one backstab and another hit and that was it. And the Lich is still level 1. Are you kidding me? There's basically no experience anymore on the map, really. Okay, we have the middle here, the remainder, the remainder of the fountain, and the top left. So we had to have quite a bit actually still, but this took forever to get Lich level 2. He's gonna get it now, but thinking beyond that, level 3 Lich is miles away. Also, level 3 Dreadlord is basically impossible with this now. We have 3-3-1 uh, three, three, heroes on the Orc side. Also not the highest levels I've ever seen, but definitely better. Berserker upgrade coming, more raiders coming. For Linguagua, a fight is imminent. So here we go, Dreadlord Destroyer timing as we've seen it so often. Trying to kill the orc before the Blade Master can really do anything. And the first sleep coming out towards the blade right away, but the stomp level one is amazing! Hit the entire army, that's usually close to impossible. 1 to 0 aiming for the Kodo Beast next, but great usage of the scroll of speed gets the Kodo out of there and back to safety. And I think it devoured a fiend as well, right? Yes, yeah, so one yes. fiend killed, one fiend devoured, only one is left on the field. Dreadlord has to be called, with that he will survive. Blade Master not getting slept here too much. Here we go with the sleep coming in again. Now 1 to 0, aiming for the back line, wanting to take out the berserkers. With that, perhaps the destroyers can win that fight. That's what he's trying for, anyways. Fiend, the third one, almost dead, but will make it away as well. The Kodo Beast would be one of the biggest kills he could get right here, but the next scroll of speed, dude, Linguagua is fighting a really strong fight right here, but the heroes are still standing, and they're still battling for 1 to 0. One destroyer now is gonna be taken out, and 1 to 0 has to tuck tail and run, and it's gonna back out of this with his TP. That was, I think, the best timing for 1 to 0, until, like, Banshees are coming, if he's going for Banshees. Lingwagua wasn't really ready for that fight, I think. Uh, Headhunter upgrade just finished during that fight. Not sure if Kodo upgrade was Players finished or not. Attack. No, it's only queued now. Um, but alright, for that, he took a decent fight, I guess. Good controls, as you pointed out. And now he's getting the third red spot item on the map. This never happens on Concealed Hills. Yeah, and there's so many great ones to pick up here. Rune Bracers would be nice as well. Sometimes I forget about them being fairly useless in some matchups. Second, Sobi Mask. Is he gonna give them both to the Shadow Hunter? They do stack, by the way. Damn, that blade. I'm worried for that blade. Uh, it's, uh, he's fine, he's fine. <laughs> and now, Shadow Hunter mana region. Holy crap! That is some crazy mana region. <laughs> that looks like a clarity right there. Expansion, by the way, in the meantime, was coming up, and it seems like, uh, yeah, it feels like an unusual timing. Normally, when you go for this destroyer plus uh, Dreadlord timing, you want to put all into offense that you can. So, I wasn't expecting this play, and it seems like Nita was Linguagua still hasn't scouted for this. With a Blade Master, this is easily doable, of course. In fact, now he's very close by, and he is going to swing south, and is going to see it now. He's going to be able to harass these Acolytes and kill the Ziggurat, but it's too late for the Haunted. Yeah, but he delays the income. That's, I guess, the most important thing. He can always go... Oh, push into the base from 1 to 0, trying to force a town portal. Oh, coil into nowhere as Linguagua saves the peons into the burrow. Second one as well. So, kind of a base race here. Expansion versus main. But reinforced defenses is up. 
So this will take quite some time for one to zero. Expansion just uh, mined 50 gold, by the way. So this is basically the perfect timing for the Orc here to take this out. TC is probably bringing a TP from the shop. He is. Reinforced defenses doing a good job here. One borrow still was taken out. Is one to zero going to take the fight into the borrows? Perhaps not too advisable. TP very late. The Kota Beast gets the Devourer off and a Fiend killed as well with a backstab through the TC. That looked weird, or a crit rather. <laughs> but that was a great trade for Linguagua. Yeah, expansion gone. Here's supply stack now. Um, needs to go for another burrow, and that will take some time. So he's stuck at 43. Can 1 to 0 fight, uh, uh, find another fight where he has the supply advantage? His hero levels are starting to look better with 4 3, almost 3, but all these resources that went into the expansion gone. Going heavier and heavier now into destroyers, I guess. No fiends at all anymore. He's going pure destroyers. Oh, okay. Oh my god, I'm such a, I'm such a hater of this. <laughs> I think destroyers are just a not good, not a good fighting unit anymore. But this is one to zero. One of the few players who perhaps can make this work. We'll see. What oh, I like what Linguagua is doing here. Um, not going for the burrow, but expanding, and with that, getting the ten food that he needs to not be supply stuck anymore. This is way faster. And gives them, of course, more income. And this is the perfect timing to expand, then, I guess. Yeah, moving into two base versus two base. All right. The bigger the armies get, the harder it is usually to lose everything to a destroyer morph timing. When you have 12 Berserkers plus Kodos plus heroes, of course, the destroyers usually don't have enough mana to bust down everything and this is what one to zero is aiming to do like this is an extremely one-dimensional army it's just destroyers plus heroes he has to yeah overwhelm in a couple of seconds to hope to win a fight but this actually doesn't have to be a army versus army kind of game it could become a more base race focused kind of game <coughs> interesting it's very unusual to see this matchup developing in this way that's true, but this is the way Linguagua games go. They're always unusual and different. Oh, Blake Master. We'll have to pop the invul here to get away, I think. Uh, or will he? Uh, sleep, actually, level one. I guess wasn't fast enough there to catch him again. Wagua is going south, though. Not in upkeep yet. One to zero is in upkeep. I feel like Guaca really doesn't have to force the issue right now, but perhaps it's just posturing because this is forcing destroyer morph right now. Already four destroyers morphed. If you can force all of these statues to be morphed and then actually just abandon, this might be the best play Guaca can hope for. Lots of headhunters. No upgrades on them though, still plus five thanks to the Kodo. Heal scroll, invul potion, triple invul for Linguagua. Shows how many resources he has. He never broke upkeep in this game. But with Coil Nova, 1 to 0 might be able to pick apart some units, then get the supply advantage, which he already has, or ex expand that supply advantage, and then fight. It is like 20 supply difference almost. And Linguagua can't fight this yet. He's not producing. Guagua, you're on two bases. Just make units. <laughs> oh, you just started. Now. All right. Went for a Shredder as well. Blade Master using the invul here extremely early not to get slapped. <clears throat> Instead, it's asleep on the Shadow Hunter. And this Orc army is perhaps a little too small at the moment. He needs more piercing damage against all of these destroyers who are moving forward and looking for those kills. DK has to be careful as well, though, does not have the death pack. It's the Orc level 2. And now with the Hex coming in and a Stomp to fall, this could be the kill. But he dispels against the Hex and that will be the TP out. And with that, Wagwa buys himself a lot of time. There is a Skeleton Harass, but this is countered easily by the Burrow that is already there. And with the, for a 20 supply difference, this was a good fight, and I think we will see how the fights in the late game will go. 1 to 0 is transitioning into Banshees, though. So there is going to be damage mitigation for the Orc. And maybe he can fight it with that, but I really don't like this Mass Destroyer thing. He once again has four statues on the ground. It's actually working out fairly well just by virtue only of numbers. 
If this was, as I said earlier, 12, <clears throat> 12 Berserkers, they should be able to snipe those destroyers out easily. Upgrades also do come into play here in the late game. We have bad riders coming in, actually. Okay. Well, there's not too many fiends. I do like this. Okay. And there's no experience for the undead if the bad riders explode. So you kind of force Coil Nova onto them and then it doesn't end up on anything else. One to zero posturing on the left hand side, Linguagua on the right. One to zero still with that big supply lead at around ten is gonna go towards the expansion. Does Guagua have a TP? He yes. does. Triple invul as well, I like that. Make sure the heroes are safe. And now he has four bad riders. If they all connect, that's two destroyers gone immediately. Alright. Can he break the expansion now? I think uh, the orcs certainly can with all the siege damage he has. Oh, actually, it's only one raider, not too much. This is gonna end up in a straight up expansion trade. One to zero is already taking some damage, but it's Linguagua now with the Lost Burrow is stuck at 54. One to zero, also with losing the Ziggurats, though, can't morph destroyers anymore <clears throat> if it should come to an engagement, which is gonna be a big deal. But Guagua somehow just doesn't get the numbers he needs. One to zero's got a massive army at this point. 70 supply. Banshee's in here as well, for which there are no walkers anywhere in sight. 700 gold expansion just gone. No repair, no TP, no save, nothing. He's getting the haunted gold mine for it, of course. But this wasn't as expensive. And one to zero continues his uh, push into the base now. Like, it's gotta be a reaction. All right, here comes the TP. I think the Bad Riders have not been revealed yet. TP very far forward. Bad Riders are seen now, but they are. Okay, here comes one web, but it's not too many fiends. One, two, three. Oh, More Bad you? Riders still oh. available. Oh, they're so low. Destroyers in the... Needs so much healing. Can you get some last hits with the blade? Oh, the miss. One. Double oh, miss. What? Double <laughs> miss. It could have been a double kill, but instead the RNGs Jesus is in favor of the undead. Banshees, boys. Banshees. I'm telling you. Curse is a very, very, very strong spell. Absolutely. Tiny Great Hall time again. Whoa! Guagua just dropping down heavily in supply and should realize that the undead TP'd out with plenty of armies still, yet he still goes for the expansion. I guess he feels, he may feel he has to go for a bit of a risk. Blade Master being seen by the Shade, Colnova right away, dropping down to half HP. Sleep finds him as well, but so does the Heal Wave. Stomp in the front line, only against the heroes really. He wants to force his TP on the DK once again. Invul transferred. Wonder who doesn't have to use it yet. Oh! Colnova in the TC just dies. <clears throat> no protection for him. Don't know if he still had the Invul, but if he did, he didn't use it. And now, piece by piece, being focused out, the Blade Master still slept for most of the time, can't put in the damage. It's only the Berserkers here, which are good against the Destroyers, but don't do too much against Fiends or the Heroes. Only Silver Lining here for the Orc is that the Lich doesn't have mana, otherwise these Berserkers would all be dead already. And with the Dreadlord now level 3, it's so many sleeps, over and over, the Blade Master is forced to just watch, with closed eyes, I guess, as the Kodo falls as well, and every Berserker will be getting picked off. The heroes now, after this first TC killer being ignored, and Linguagua is dropping down to 34 supply, dropping even further if he loses more. And the Blade Master is surrounded, by the way, to make matters worse. He has the invul, but 1 to 0 might be, might be able to hold that one. Through that invul, actually. This is looking like the end here. Most certainly, Guagua put up a good fight, but in the end, 1 to 0 seems to be a little too strong. Invul 7 seconds over. Nova! That's the kill and the GG. 2-0 for 1-2-0.